Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Well, since last week we took a look at uh, maintaining diesel locomotives, I thought it appropriate to follow through with a look at steam locomotives. It's even more appropriate given that we're coming up on the holiday season when everybody likes to drag out their old steam locomotives and set up a, a section of track around the Christmas tree and just have a good run session with their old locomotives. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can lubricate them, clean them, and get them in top running shape just in time for the holidays. So let's get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Okay, what we're gonna work with today is an HO scale Bachmann 482 locomotive, a light mountain. And uh, these are a pretty popular model. They're, all, they're very similar to their consolidation uh, and a lot of their other uh, US uh, prototype locomotives. Uh, but to be honest with you, there isn't a lot of difference between a locomotive made for the US market and a, and a one made for the uh, UK market. And I would imagine that that's true for all the other markets that uh, Bachmann produces models for. So what I'm going to show you today should work very well for just about any prototype uh, or any uh, Bachmann product and it should carry over to just about any other uh, manufacturer's models because there's not a lot of difference in the way that they build their models. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I've got a foam cradle for it. I'm going to flip it over so we can get to the undersides because that's where most of the work we're going to do is going to be located. So one of the first things you want to do is take a look at your drivers. Get the wheel treads cleaned off. You can just use uh, a Q-tip uh, with some isopropyl or whatever cleaner you want to use, just like I showed you for the diesels, and clean the tread of these wheels off. And if you're running this with uh, DC, you can just use a 9-volt battery with the wires attached to the wheels to turn the, the drivers. Or I'll show you in a minute how you can do this on the layout. So it's very important, keep your, uh, keep your tread of your tires, uh, your wheels clean, and uh, that way you'll have good pickup. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go through the cleaning process for the wheels on this Bachmann Steam Loco. And for that, I have a, uh, I have a piece of uh, rag laying here on the rails. And I'm going to put some isopropyl alcohol right over the rails. And you can use a rag, you can use a, a paper towel, anything like that will work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly bring the locomotive up. And when I get it up here, I'm going to put the front drivers, the front two, over the cloth. And we'll see how many drivers we can actually get on there at a time. And then I'm just going to hold it and let it spin. And that's going to clean those wheels very nicely. And it's very, very easy that way. And you do that with all four drivers. And you can see, this is what came off of the uh, tread of those wheels. And that's all there is to it. Now, for your, um, for your uh, tender, it's best to just go ahead and clean it with a Q-tip or something like that uh, sitting on its back. And if you do that on a regular basis and keep your track clean, you won't have any problems at all with pickup. Another thing here that you can take a look at are these electrical contacts. And they're very hard to see. They're down in here. You can see that one maybe right there. And they're just a little bronze projection uh, that uh, feeds electricity from the different sides of the locomotive up to the motor. Now, in this particular case, uh, they sit up against the back side of the drivers. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you that. If you look right here, you can see this little piece of metal right here. 
Uh, and that rubs up against the back of the wheel. And there's one against each one of the drivers. So what you want to do is make sure, once again, that there's no lint and dust, that kind of stuff, uh, that has accumulated behind these. You can just take a toothpick like this and just run it in between the wheel and the uh, pickup, and that will remove any lint and dirt that's accumulated. So just go ahead and try doing that, and that should clean it up. Uh, if it's really grungy back in there, and it can get uh, pretty grungy at times, again, use your cleaning solution and rub it against the back of the wheel and on that bronze uh, pickup, and that way you'll get it good and clean, and it'll be able to pick up. Now, steam locomotives are very, very susceptible to pickup problems. So make sure you get those good and clean. And on all of my steam locomotives, I try to use a, uh, a keep alive of some sort or a stay alive in order to help with this pickup issue. So you can go back and take a look at some of my videos on installing uh, keep alives and stay alive devices in locomotives. Okay, so that should get your wheels good and clean. Don't forget your uh, lead truck here and your pony truck here, as well as your tender wheels. And for those, again, those are real easy. You just give it a good rub like this on the surfaces with your cleaning solution and you're good to go. And on this particular locomotive, they have uh, wipers here on the uh, wheels. So it picks up from one set of drivers here and the other set back here. And you can just literally run your uh, cleaning solution uh, on a Q-tip underneath of that and get it cleaned up as well. And that way, You'll have good pickup from the tender as well as from the locomotive. And you can see here, I'm starting to accumulate a bit of gunk on here. Okay, so that gets the wheels cleaned up. Now, the next thing, lubrication. In this particular case, what I'm going to do is show you how you can lubricate the drivers and all the rest of these. And it is a complicated procedure because you have to take this keeper plate here off of the bottom because that's what keeps the wheels, the drivers, in place. And in order to be able to lubricate the gears down in here, you have to take it apart. So be very careful. Just takes a very small screwdriver. And we're going to pop that one out of there. Like that, put them down here so I won't lose them. And we'll remove this one. Okay, there's two, and that's all they are. Now, it's very difficult in most cases to get this out because of those little projections that I showed you. Also, this brake rigging here extends down between the drivers and it catches on the, the drivers. So you just have to hold your wheels in place, otherwise they're gonna pop out. And you don't want that to happen because that, oops, forgot. There's a third screw right here in the middle that needs to come out as well. There we go. Okay, now, be very careful lifting this out because it will pull the drivers out with you. So just put your fingers on your drivers and gently lift up because you have to pull that sucker up and get those hangers, brake hangers, out of, from in between the drivers. There, that one's come up. Now I'll keep doing back here. Just work very slowly and eventually it's going to pop out of there. There we go. Okay. Now, now you can really see these little uh, electrical pickups and these guys here, and these sit against the back sides of your drivers. And that's what provides electrical pickup to the motor. Okay. Now let me set this aside. Now under that, there's another cover plate right here that covers your gears and axles and the like. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. 
Now, on some locomotives, you will have bearings, just like I showed you on your diesel locomotives. But on steam locomotives, uh, a lot of the Bachmann models do not have uh, bearings. Uh, they just use the uh, the metal-to-metal -metal, uh, contact here as bearings. And um, on, on some manufacturers' locomotives, they do have regular bearings. Uh, I believe Hornby uses bearings on a lot of their models. Okay, now this model here has never been lubricated. What is in here is what came from the factory. So there's not a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate my gear here. And my guide on this is use grease on your gears and use oil on bearings and bearing surfaces. Now in this particular case, uh, they have used at the factory apparently um, grease down here in the uh, on the axles as well. And uh, I would have preferred to use uh, oil. However, you never know what's going to come out of the Chinese factories. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now normally I would uh, go ahead and give a shot of oil to these bearing surfaces and if there are normal bearings like there were with the uh, diesels, you would give a shot to each one of those bearings. But in this case, that's not the, the situation. Okay, so once those are back in there, then becomes the difficult part of getting this all back together. So you want to put it down in here, just like it came out. One thing to, to consider when you're getting ready to take a model locomotive like this apart, or, any, or anything like this apart, You've got an iPhone, you've got a, a cell phone of some type with a camera, take a picture. Take a picture before you start taking it apart, and that way, if you get to the point where you're going to put it back together and you can't remember the order or the sequence or how things were uh, installed previously before you took it apart, then you can refer back to the photograph. So always, always do that. Now, the next thing we need to do is to get this guy back in place. So you have to be very careful just insert it back in here and push down. And hopefully all of those little pickups will fall right back into place. There it goes. Looks like everybody's back in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert my first screw in the middle. And get it tightened down. Now don't over tighten these, you just want them tight enough to hold it. You don't want to strip your gears or strip your threads putting this guy back together. Okay. And the last one goes in here. Okay, so that's back together again. Once you get it back together, go through here and make sure that all of these little uh, contacts here, contact arms, are not bent and that they're properly in their place behind the driver. And I just run a little needle back behind each wheel. And that way you can check and make sure that they pop back into place correctly. Because sometimes these things will get bent, they'll get jammed into the spokes on a driver, and you'll need to straighten those out. So then the next thing I'd want to do is go ahead and just put a little drop of oil here on the lead truck bearings here at the axle where it's the bearing surface. And this will prevent those, no uh, those uh, worrisome squeaks that you will hear occasionally coming from the wheels. And we're going to do it on the pony truck too. Remember, just a little touch. Okay, that's perfectly adequate right there. Got it all lubed up now. Okay, let's go back to the trucks on the tender because they also will get squeaky on you. And in this case, um, 
These have needle points on the ends of the wheels that go into slots or depressions in the side frames here. So all you do is just put a drop here on each one of these to slide your needle applicator back in here and give it just a touch on the end of that axle. Do each one in turn and that'll keep it from getting squeaky and keep it rolling nice and free. Okay, so that's all there is to getting that done. Now, as far as the motor goes, in most of these locomotives, it's impossible to get to the motor. Or, well, it's not impossible, but it's going to mean taking it apart. And in most cases, these motors are permanently uh, lubricated. If you wish to, let me, let me point out, it's very difficult to get these apart because basically the motor is encased in the two halves of a large cast metal uh, weight that sits in here inside of the uh, plastic boiler and getting it out is difficult. Then getting to the motor means taking those screws out that hold the two halves uh, together and taking that completely apart. And the chances of getting it apart and getting it back together again are not all that great um, if you've never done this before. So if you feel that you absolutely need to lubricate your motor and the internals on these, do it very carefully. Take lots of pictures as you go. Uh, if you have a friend who has done one of these before, then get them involved because otherwise you can end up with a real problem there. Okay, let's take a look then at the final thing that I do here, and that is lubricating the running gear. So let's get the, our oil out again. And what I do is on each drive rod and connecting rod, I put a, just a touch of oil right here on each movable section. Okay, so there's a little contact down in here that needs to be. Okay, so there's a joint right here, a joint here, there's a movable joint right here, right here, here, here. All of these surfaces need just a touch of oil. I also put it here on these guides, just a touch, and a little bit here on the piston. And then do that on both sides of the locomotive. And that way, it'll be fully lubricated and it's going to reduce the wear considerably. Because eventually, if you run your locomotives a lot, uh, they will start to wear at the point where the uh, screws go through them. And they'll get to the point where they're so sloppy that you'll have to replace them somehow. But, you know, in most of our lifetimes, that's not going to happen. Okay. So that's got this locomotive ready to roll again. Okay, just to drive my point home about working with uh, other Bachmann products and other types of models, this is a Bachmann, it's a UK prototype 262 locomotive. So let's flip it over. So, you know, I would just loop, as, as I said before, um, for lubrication on this one, all of the, uh, all of the moving points here, here on the guides, maybe just a little touch on the piston, a little bit here on each one of these surfaces where we've got a screw. Contact, get everybody lubricated. Um, for the uh, trucks, not too much there, just a touch on the axle. Very easy to do on this one. And then to uh, lubricate the axle bearings, uh, you can remove this cover plate here the same way. There's a screw here and a screw here. Pop those off and you've got access to the bearings and the gear underneath there, just like on the mountain that I showed you. So this one's fairly easy. Now the great thing is there is a screw right here at the front that you can take out, and I put it here, and then there's another one right here on the back at this point. So all you have to do is take those screws out 
and you're ready to go. Then just pull and it will come right out. And as you can see, I've got a decoder installed in this one. And this is the Bachmann motor. Now in this particular case, it's easy to lubricate these various points. It has the same type of motor bearings as on the diesel. So you just give it a drop right there. And same thing here on the rear. Put a drop right there. And that will lubricate those bearings. Now as you can see here, I have recently lubricated my gears. So that's not an issue. I know it is well lubricated. It's not going to be a problem as far as that goes. So this one is very easy to maintain. You can easily get in there and uh, lubricate those gears and the bearing surfaces on the drivers. Or you can just lubricate the gear on the motor as I showed you a, mo a second ago. And that will be transmitted down through the gears to the gears on the uh, driver. So not a problem. And then all you have to do in that case is take your lubricant and put your needle right down there at the point where the axle disappears into the frame and give it a drop right there. And that's going to lubricate the bearing surfaces in there. Um, these are a very easy to care for model and a lot of these uh, Bachmann locomotives are very, very easy to care for. And they will tell you in the instructions, they have very good lubrication instructions. Uh, and they'll tell you how, you know, how often and what surfaces you need to regularly lubricate. But this is what I do on a regular basis, about once a year for most of my steam locomotives that I operate on a regular basis. And uh, if there is, again, check for lint, because if there's any lint down here between the uh, pickups and the back of the drivers, you're not going to have very reliable performance. So you can just work those out. There's a little bit of dirt there that came out. I don't know if you could see that discoloration. Okay, so that's about it for that one. And uh, clean the wheels the same way as I showed you with uh, the Bachmann locomotive. Now, another tip, before you handle any of your locomotives after you've been oiling them, get yourself a paper towel, put some alcohol or other clean, or, or just go to the sink and wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water, get the grease and oil off. Because there's nothing that will ruin a model's finish faster than grease and oil stains on the surface. So the rubbing alcohol does it, does it real quick. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're in the US or the UK, uh, people all have a fascination for steam locomotives, especially around the holidays. So get your steam locomotive out, get it lubricated, cleaned up, and running in good shape just in time for the holidays, and have a great time with your old steam locomotive. Have a great weekend. We'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. I'll give you a tip. I've got an order from North Coast Engineering coming in soon. And that's what the next video, hopefully, will be about. Bye now.